Hi, this is Mo from Smart Training 365. A muscle's shape is genetically determined. For example, if you're born with a four pack, you cannot add more dividers to convert it into a six pack. No matter how hard you try, know which exercises you do. The configuration of each person's abs is unique as it's permanent as are our fingerprints. In this video, we're going to discuss what we can and cannot change in terms of muscle shape and which goals are realistically achievable so you don't waste your time using strategies that are based on beliefs and wishful thinking rather than on fact and logic. Are you? Do you believe in muscle shaping? Yeah, of course. Which area of your body that you want to change? My belly mainly and more like my upper body to look more like fit. What are you going to do to change it? I try to get in a lot of cardio and then I try to eat clean but that's the most difficult thing to do like uh, right. I can't eat clean so I'm trying to like you know figure out what kind of workouts I could get for my you know get cut on my belly fat. Do you have any other part to work on? Uh, my chest yeah upper body. How? Uh, just I'm just doing the basics like you know like the regular exercise chest press like or chest fly what shape you want to achieve I want to have like a lean appearance more than like a bulk because I'm a short guy how are you gonna achieve the lean appearance uh, how am I gonna do it that's the main goal I need to get a good trainer I'm just working out from few apps and stuff but there's not a particular goal what I'm following I'm just doing the basic traditional workout your exercise selection is based on something that you yeah, just you saw like uh, people's uh, reference or like from an app or like something from a YouTube video or like you know but not a proper plan I'm not following a proper plan Do you believe in muscle shaping really yeah what are you trying to shape uh, when you work out I work out uh, every day like because uh, comparing to my age Right now, uh, I work like full body. Okay. Full body, like take me like. And which body shape you want to change? Uh, actually, I want the abs. Okay. Yeah. And what are you gonna do for that? Uh, this one, abs like uh, well, as long as you have abs, body mean you are uh, look good. Right. Yeah, exactly. How are you gonna work your abs? So first of all, I warm up yeah. and start to do like uh, the cardio, the special cardio for abs. And the machine for abs too. Okay. The, the yeah, machine. Okay. Also, you get abs when you do it by yourself, you know, as a cardio. Right. right. Legs, this upside down. Okay. You know. Any other body part that you want to shape? All my body. All my body. Yeah, all the muscles. All body. Yeah. Do you believe in muscle shaping? I, uh, you know what? Well, it's the first time I, Mo, when I started speaking to you, it was the first time that I really uh, heard about it, actually. Uh, but from from speaking with you, it's a lot of stuff that I, I definitely agree with. Uh, you know, for me, I'm, I'm a pretty thin guy, but, uh, you know, mobility and, and staying... Uh, Those are your goals? Yeah, you know what, I uh, just look, really look good in a bathing suit. We play pickleball and the conditioning side's good, uh, you know, for that. But you don't work out uh, to, for example, work on bigger chest, bigger quads, bigger biceps peak. Are those I, things on your list? I would say arms, arms, chest yeah. uh, are the big ones for me. Well, that's good. So how, how are you planning to do that? Uh, you know what, for me, getting really into working out in the last uh, year and a half, two years, uh, it's been a lot of uh, just picking up dumbbells and doing bicep curls, hammer curls, different variations of that, uh, you know, working different areas of the bicep. Do you have any muscle that you want to work on more than other muscles? Oh, when you get older, you want to have more defined of your arms, right? I got bulky arms, but I wish I had a little bit more ripped, right? But mm -hmm. my body's always meant to be big, thick arms. Well, are you w working on something like with the biceps? Like, are you... Yeah, I'm usually doing a lot more cables these days and a little more yeah, reps, cables. you know what I mean? And just going up and down with the weight. So it's just kind of shock triggering it a little bit more, but okay. uh, that's about it, you know? Where do you see your body shape in a year from now? If you continue doing what are you doing? Not really a difference unless I start really focusing, right? So, so what do you need to change? I need just to change up my, uh, a little bit more reps and a little more hard work and, you know, same. So doing more reps and harder work from what you're already doing. So you increase Listen, the intensity and more reps. I could do a lot more, but sometimes you need to shock the system a little bit better, better too sometimes. So I'm just used to the same old routine where the body just used to it. Sometimes you just have to do a whole new program. Do you believe in muscle shaping? Yes. Uh, with muscle shaping, it comes in a lot of factors. Uh, three biggest things is resting, eating, 
and I feel like the biggest other thing is progressive overload. Okay. So if you want to grow muscle, if you know that you're weak at that muscle, um, you got to build over time, you got to build strength. But also you got to let it rest too. So if you're hitting that same muscle group every single week, like four or five times a week, it, it's not beneficial. So you got to have a, a cycle, you have to have a game plan where you're hitting the weak points, you're hitting the strength points. Right, like right, that. that's yeah. nice. If someone wants to work the inner chest versus, versus the outer chest, is that something possible, you think? Yeah, 100%. There's machines built for it, and then there's free weight. Like a pec deck machine, obviously, is going to hit the center. Uh -huh. And then you said the outer? Yeah, the outer. outer would be more like flies or something like that, So okay. where you focus on that muscle group. But I feel like free weight is where, if you're trying to actually isolate that muscle, it's free weight. Free weight would be your best instead of machines. What about the inner and outer biceps? Is that possible to emphasize one end versus the other? 100%, yeah, 100%. There's cables, there's obviously dumbbells. What about the uh, inner and outer calves? Is that, that, is that possible? It, it is possible, yeah, 100%. What should someone do to work the inner, let's say, calf? Inner head. So this, for, for foot, position? foot position. So there's three different angles, right? You get the outer angle, middle, and then inner. Okay. So a lot of people just do the, the, the middle one where they don't understand that there's three different variations right. that they have to hit. Exact same thing with bicep, exact same thing with tricep. Bicep. Last question, where did you hear this uh, information? Is it like something that you watched video on, you read on, or you experienced with? The thing that like people didn't have back in the day, like in the 2000s and stuff like that, is social media. Right. So a lot, like well, for instance, you're doing the YouTube stuff, TikTok, yeah. Instagram. Yeah. We didn't, we didn't have those kind of stuff where our yeah. generation does, and we should be thankful for that. Oh, yeah, for sure. you, when you see stuff on social media, uh, there's a, a guy that I follow. His name is JPG Coaching. Who? JPG Coaching. Okay. He helps a lot with isolating the muscle, uh, training till failure and hitting certain parts of the muscle properly. So okay. I think that's where the advantage comes for us, is social media. No problem, Take care. See ya. As you can see, everyone have different goals and different strategies to achieve them. Some are happy to just use the machines without having to think too much. Other watch videos, read books, and articles from different sources, etc. It's important to research and educate ourselves to get the most out of our workout sessions. But it's hard to select the right information with everything available online. Bodybuilding is filled with folklore and beliefs that are based on wishful thinking than on fact or logic. People often believe that certain exercises will change the shape of a muscle beyond simply making it larger in ways that would make it more aesthetically pleasing. But that is not really possible. Here is why. Let's say that these balloons represent the shape of our biceps before starting lifting weights. That sucks, right? <laughs> As you can see, they look the same. Then after, let's say, months or years of weightlifting, our biceps got fuller and bigger. Only then we'll know what is the real shape of our biceps and if we have a peak or long fuller bicep. People who have bicep peak but didn't know it when they first started working out usually attribute that achievement to certain exercises. But in reality, the shape of our muscles and biceps cannot be influenced or altered by using specific exercises. I'm going to explain this in more detail. Let's look how the idea of developing a fuller bicep started. In the 1960s, a man named Larry Scott dominated the bodybuilding scene. He won Mr. California in 1960, Mr. America in 62, Mr. Universe in 64. He then won Mr. Olympia in 65 and 66. Although he had an excellent overall physique, he was especially known for his arms, his biceps in particular. They were big, of course, but they were also unusually full. By this, I mean his biceps went all the way into the crook of his arm, whereas most people's biceps stop about half an inch before the crook of the arm. People assumed that Larry Scott must be doing a special exercise to cause his biceps to be so full. Interestingly, he did have a favorite exercise, which is known as the preacher curl. So many people assumed that this particular exercise was responsible for the fullness of his bicep. In fact, the exercise became known as Scott curls, a term which is still used today by some of the old schoolers. However, Larry Scott's biceps were shaped exactly as his genetic had predetermined. Regardless of which exercises he had chosen to do, his biceps would have had the exact same shape, notwithstanding fluctuation in overall size. 
Some people might ask, how do you know his biceps would have looked the same if he had not done those curls? Very simply, it has never been duplicated again, despite thousands of people, if not millions, have done the exact same exercise. No one has ever developed arms like those of Larry Scott's. But that's not the only reason we can be assured that it wasn't the preacher curls that produced those arms. From the perspective of physics, there is simply no way that any part of continuous muscle fiber anywhere between its origin and insertion can be made to experience more tension than the rest of the muscle fiber. There's a principle called the all or nothing principle of muscle contraction. Normally, when we speak about this principle, we are referring to ends of a muscle fiber. The fact that the entire length of fiber contracts if it contracts at all. However, the all or nothing principle could also be used to mean that a muscle which has multiple heads or parts, which all contribute to one single function in unison, cannot have its parts emphasized by way of exercise. Muscles are similar to ropes or elastic bands. Let's say you tie a rope around a tree and pull on it. The rope will be evenly taut through its entire length. It cannot be more slack nor more taut anywhere between you and the tree. The tension is evenly distributed along the entire length of the rope. Muscle operate the same way. Any muscle that is required to contract against resistance will have that muscle tension evenly distributed through the entire length of the muscle fibers, from origin where it begins to insertion where it connects. The reason a muscle is able to produce skeletal movement is because of the evenly distributed contraction that causes the muscle's origin and insertion to move closer together. This takes us to why it's not possible to preferentially activate the inner or outer head of the biceps or the inner or outer calf, the lower or upper abs, or the inner or outer chest. Here is why. Here we can clearly see that biceps is a muscle that is comprised of two heads. More specifically, it's a muscle with two origins. One of the heads is called the short head and the other is the long head. What's more important to note is that both biceps heads converge into one single biceps tendon before crossing the elbow joint. That biceps tendon crosses the elbow and connects to the radius of the forearm. The reason this is important to note is because when the biceps bend the elbow, it's with the combined effort of both biceps heads. The elbow joint can only bend in one direction like a hinge. Therefore, it's impossible to isolate the long head or the short head. Both heads contract in unison because they both pull on the single biceps tendon. There won't be any functional difference in terms of elbow bending in having one head contract more than the other head. We often hear people suggesting that a particular exercise will emphasize the outer head or the inner head of the biceps. This belief is a fantasy. If it were possible to emphasize the inner biceps or outer biceps, it would require that the elbow bend in more than one direction and it would require two separate tendons crossing the elbow and two separate insertion on the forearm. For example, here I modified the actual anatomy so that instead of there being only one biceps tendon, there are two tendons with two separate insertions. Now imagine that instead of the elbow bending like a hinge, it's able to bend like a ball and a socket, multi-directional. If these circumstances were real, the outer biceps could pull the forearm more toward the outside and the elbow would allow that kind of movement. The inner biceps could pull the forearm more toward the inside with the elbow allowing the different angle of movement. Thus, by choosing the direction of elbow movement, one could theoretically emphasize one side of the biceps or the other, but this is not reality. Same with calves. Through the years, many of us have heard that we can preferentially activate the medial inner head or the lateral outer head of the gastrocnemius simply by angling our toes in or out during the calf exercise. But it's not true. It's a gym lore, like folklore. Nothing can preferentially influence whether the medial head or the lateral head works harder. The reason for this is similar to the biceps. Both inner and outer calf heads converge at the one single Achilles tendon. When the calf muscle contracts, both inner and outer heads, along with the soleus, collaborate in unison and pull upward on the heel bone. This upward pulling on the heel bone produces plantar flexion and ankle extension. 
In the left illustration, I have placed two green lines representing make-believe Achilles tendons. Let's pretend for just a moment that this is the actual anatomy of the gastrocnemius. If it were possible for the inner calf to work separately from the outer calf, each head would have to have its own separate attachment to the heel bone, and each would have to be able to pull on the calcaneus in a different direction. However, reality is what we see on the right. The inner and outer heads of the calf muscle pull straight upward on the one single tendon and cannot be separately isolated. But let's look at what happens when we turn our toes inward or outward. How could anyone logically believe that turning the toes inward or outward, which requires rotation of the entire leg at the level of the hip, change the mechanics of how the calf pulls upward on the heel bone? It's impossible to rotate the foot without rotating the lower leg, and it's impossible to rotate the lower leg without rotating the femur. So the orientation of the calf muscle relative to the ankle and the Achilles tendons is still the same regardless of whether the toes are pointing inward or outward. The shape of our calves is determined by our genetics. We have no control over the shape of our calves other than simply increasing and decreasing their size. Same for chest. For years, people believed that a dumbbell press works the inner portion of the pecs and that dumbbell fly works the outer portion of the pecs. This is completely false. As you can see, the sternal pectoral fibers run from the sternum to the humerus, like continuous ropes. Regardless of whether the elbow is bent more or bent less, the pectoral muscle pulls the humerus toward the sternum in the exact same way. In fact, the pec muscle doesn't even know the position of the elbow. It only knows the amount of load, whether it's a product of a longer lever during a fly or a shorter lever during a press. The all or nothing principle of muscle contraction also applies to the abs, although not to the same degrees as it does in all the other skeletal muscle. This is explained in more detail in our course, in the rectus abdominis section. But we cannot only contract the upper abs, nor only the lower abs. There is no such a thing as an exercise that allows us to do that. Further, it is impossible to add another row of abs as I earlier explained, and it's equally impossible to selectively spot reduce the fat that is accumulated in the lower region of, for example, of the abs with any exercise. Everything I talked about in this video is explained in greater detail in the resistance training specialist course, which is approved by NASM ISSA and the NSCA. The purpose of these videos is to create awareness and help you achieve your fitness goals efficiently and safely. In the video description, you will find a link to our webinar, Compound vs. Isolation. If you need to learn more about our training system, visit us at smarttraining365.com or email me at mo@smarttraining365.com. See you in the next video. Take care.